Are you getting comments? Oh, people can see us. Welcome, Yay. friends. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm super excited. Um, I'm Pam from Rock and Resources, and I am going to share some motivating tips for you in the classroom. Some of the things that work for me, I wanted to share for you. I was a teacher for 26 years, and now I'm a curriculum designer, and I have a blog that shares a ton of teaching tips. So if you're not on my blog, I would love for you to come join us at rockandresources.com. Okay, so I know your time is valuable, so let's get started. Yay! Okay, I am not the super techie person, so it might be hard for me to respond to you if you're writing comments. I'd love to know where you're from, who you are, what you teach, whether you're homeschool, teacher, whatever. But I am not going to be responding throughout, but my assistant, Demi, is here. And any questions you have that she can answer, she's going to answer as we go. And then I promise I will answer all of your questions at the end. So let's get started so that I don't waste your time. Some of the effective motivational tools for me in my classroom to get those kiddos just jumping up and down and learning and things that could really stick to them. Um, they were songs, raps, poems, acronyms, quotes, some visual cues, or anything out of the box so that they would really want to learn and want to learn for you. So, here we go. All right, the first thing I want to share with you is songs and raps. Repetition of the songs and raps is always good. So whenever you're going to do a song or a rap that goes along with a concept, you want to repeat it over and over again. I'll give you an example. One of my favorites is this one. It's called Tunes That Teach American History. When I was teaching in South Carolina, the, this went along with all of our units, from Native Americans, explorers, colonies, everything. It went along with it, and it had so many catchy tunes, and some of them were really corny, but the kids loved them. And what I would do is I would play these songs at the beginning of every lesson so they knew that social studies was ready to come, was ready to get started. And then I would play them like if we were doing a craft or anything else, and if you want the link to this one, if you teach social studies and American history, all the way from, I think this one goes from um, Native Americans all the way, Civil War, Western Expansion, all of that. So if you want this link, Demi can add it there for you. But what was great about this is the kids would sing it. And they would just go crazy and wiggling in their seats and singing it. And I didn't know if it was going to stick or not, but it really, really did. I would hear them sing it on the playground, going to the water fountain, and they loved it. They knew when social studies was getting ready to start. So I'm going to play one of them for you, if I can figure this out. Okay, here we go. So this one is about the Boston Tea Party. And there's a funny story that goes along with this, though. I recently ran into one of my old students who is now 20-some years old, and he started singing the song to me. So it sticks. Here you go. Of 1773. Okay, now it's hard and over it goes into the Boston Harbor. With hatchets and axes, the tea and the taxes went into the Boston Harbor. So believe it or not, I know that's corny, but they loved it. And if you can make it even more fun with a rap or anything like that, they will remember it. But repetition is key. I didn't sing along, obviously. I have no tune to my voice. I love my rock and roll, but I am not going to sing for you. My friends know that. And if any of you are on here, you can vouch for that. Okay. That... Also, a lot of these ideas are on my blog post that I recently wrote. So if you go to Rock and Resources, it's the very first blog post. And Demi can actually put in the very first blog post there for you so that you can get a list. There's like over 40-some ideas for new teachers, veteran teachers, any teacher, homeschool teacher, even for parents. I try to just rack my brain with all the things that worked in my classroom and put it together in a blog post for you. Should I put that on now or just... Yeah, go ahead and put that on. <laughs> okay. 
So the next thing I want to talk to you about is video. And I do video, I would do a video a lot differently because I didn't think that video was good for actually teaching. They needed the teacher in front of their classroom teaching the concept. But video was awesome for reinforcement. I loved to do any kind of video that came along with uh, something that we were studying. And one of my favorites is back from when I was a kid, Conjunction Junction. Any of the schoolhouse rocks, I mean, they rock. So you have Conjunction Junction, what's your function? I mean, I remember that now, so the kids will remember it. So video is key. And yes, I just sang to you, oh well, you'll live. Okay, the next idea I have for you is acronyms. And I know that teachers are filled with acronyms, but the, re but the reason what, who? Todd. Hey, Todd. But the reason why um, acronyms work, the reason why teachers use acronyms is because they totally work. Okay, here we go. So, like some of my favorites is like how to provide text evidence using race. Okay, so you have race, and you talk to the kids about race, you put race up everywhere, you know, you could do zoom, 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 whatever it takes to teach race, but race stands for restate, answer, cite, and explain. And this goes along with citing text evidence. So in any reading that you're doing, I mean, text evidence is huge nowadays, especially for testing. So the acronym works. I mean, the kids will remember whenever they go to test that they have to do those four things. Another acronym that I made, and you know what, you can make up your own. You could use ones that have been around for ages, or you can make up your own. And one of the ones that I made up of my own is called Faves. And I use this when I teach word choice. And I call, oh, there you go. I, I teach, <laughs> I teach um, word choice, and I call it million dollar words, and um, you can go ahead and look up, Demi can write down the link for that too, but million dollar words is great for word choice because I teach the children that they are using their million dollar words, and I'll go around the classroom and give them little million dollar tickets if they're using great words in their writing. So I came up with an uh, acronym called FAVES. And what it stands for is figurative language, adjectives that sparkle, adverbs that shine, verbs that strengthen, and sense words that sizzle. So the kids learn all these things, and when I tell them when they're writing, hey guys, go ahead and use your faves, and I'm going to be walking around the room looking for who I'm going to give a million dollar ticket to. And all the kids get very excited, and they remember their faves. So that was another one of my ideas. The next one of my ideas is song lyrics. And I love using song lyrics for so many things. I mean, first of all, rock and resources, hello. I mean, I love music. So I love to bring music into the classroom. And the kids remember it. And they go home and tell their parents, hey, do you guys know who U2 or Bono is? Because we learned about him today. and of course, you know, the parents are like, wow, you know, she's teaching them stuff about, you know, artists that we like. But anyway, the great thing about it is this. You can use song lyrics for so many reading and writing strategies. I mean, it's, it, it's endless. One of my favorites is theme. I mean, give the kids some lyrics, and of course you got to, you know, check out the lyrics first to make sure that they're okay, because there's a lot of stuff you don't want to share with your students. So, but think about theme or inferences. There's so many things that you can infer to within lyrics, and it even has me looking up the meaning of the lyrics, because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like, what does this really stand for? And the kids will dive deep into it. One of my other favorite things to do with lyrics is poetry analysis. Absolutely love it. Oh, here's Bono. So Beautiful Day is one of my favorite songs, and I would teach poetry analysis with Beautiful Day. 
and I would talk to the kids. We, we would never listen to the song first. We would always read the lyrics first and talk about it. And then, of course, you got to play the song. And you'll see them bouncing in their seat. And you might even want to close your door and put a little thing over the window and let them jump around a little bit. And then, you know, start back up to your lesson again. Whatever it takes for them to enjoy learning, right? So with the lyrics and Beautiful Day, you just come up with great questions that go along with poetry analysis. Think of your poetry elements. You got rhyme scheme, you have tone, you have, gosh, I can't even think off the top of my head, but there's, okay, here we go. So I will give you some ideas. Questions for lyrics. This is actually a freebie in my store because you can use this with any lyric you want to. You can take a look at this question list and design it for your own class, some ideas for poetry analysis. So you got, you can, oh, figurative language, that's huge in lyrics, I love that. And you can do compare and contrast, you can have the kids looking for repetition, I already said rhyme scheme, the theme, the author's purpose. There's so many things that you can do with poetry in lyrics. So. I did that, I, I used to do it like once a month, and so every month the kids would be like, okay, what song are we going to do this month? And I would mix it up, there'd be some classics, there'd be some new songs, and at the end of the year I would do a, um, like an open-ended questionnaire, and they got to choose their own lyrics, of course they had to check with their parents to make sure it's a good one, and that there was no bad language in it. But they got to choose their own lyrics and then they came in and they shared it with the rest of the class. So that was super cool. The last idea I have for you is poetry related as well. But this is a little bit different. What I used to do with poetry, and I would teach poetry throughout the year as well, and but I would introduce a different type of poem for each month or I usually did it once a month, but then I would do a lot of them towards the end of the year and poetry month and all that kind of stuff. But what I like to do is to have them write a poem related to something that we were doing. So, for example, here we go, social studies. We all know how social studies could be so boring. It could be so, so, so boring. And so I always try to bring in fun activities for the kids to do, and this was one of them. So we would learn about Diamantes. Here we go, getting used to this camera. Okay, we would learn about Diamantes, and then we would talk about different social studies aspects. So Federalist versus Anti-Federalist. In a Diamante, you go from one extreme to the other, and they had to do that in their Diamante. And so you're not only teaching a poet, a poem, a type of poem, but you're also teaching social studies. So these were some ideas, and I did want to make this real quick so that you know you weren't spending your time here listening to me ramble, ramble, ramble. But I did want to share some of these ideas with you. And if you have any questions, you can certainly, certainly, you know, ask them and I will get back to you. And I hope you gain some great ideas. What I plan to do, even if you got one idea, that's awesome. Um, and I'll be super excited to hear about it. But what I plan to do is come back every two weeks for a little while and give you some more tips. And so the next time in two weeks, I'm hoping it'll be a Tuesday again because Teacher Tips Tuesday sounds pretty cool. I plan to come back and talk about games and how you could use games to help students learn. So that is my plan for next time. So I hope to see you again. And I hope that you join me at rockandresources.com and subscribe to our newsletter because not only do you get a freebie right off the start as soon as you subscribe, but you will get freebies and teacher tips and you'll be the first to hear about some blog posts and all of that. So I hope that you come back and join me and it was good seeing some of my friends. I'm now, I'm see now that I'm relaxed, I'm seeing some of my friends and I'm super excited. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's Ashley and Brenda. Thanks for joining, guys. I'm so excited. So I want you guys to go out there and rock your teaching. Bye, guys.